Well, here we are at lesson number four. I hope you're enjoying the series. And I hope some of you that are planning to audition for musicals take advantage of these little drills, especially if you've been away from tap for a very long time. It's going to help you with your um, muscle strength in your feet and ankles and also in your memory. So try to do some of the drills. Try to look toward the end of the video if the things at the beginning seem too simple for you because I've included a couple of uh, drills that will increase your facility towards the end, especially of the third video. And I'll try to do the same thing today. So let's get started and we're going to learn uh, some new movement but we're going to put together some things that are going to take you to a little bit higher level of tap today. All right, so um, I'm excited about today because we're going to start putting some more things together, which I think will make you feel more like you're tap dancing. So we're going to take things that we already know and we're going to put them together in ways that we maybe haven't explored before. So we're going to start off with the step. Remembering that the step weight on the ball of the foot changes weight with each step. Okay, watch if I can make this happen. I'll try. What happens is if I step, you can almost see immediately that the other foot is ready to go immediately. If you do it this way and then shift your weight, you're slowing yourself down. So you want to be sure that with every step we change the weight immediately up on the balls of the feet. All right, so I'm going to just do that a little bit with music so you can practice with me. Let's do it about 16, um, 16 times. Ready and set. Two, three, four. Moving around your room. All right. So practice doing that until you're really comfortable moving all around. Uh, let's try moving in a little different pattern. So let's try our grapevine pattern. I'll move this way. So you can just move. hard to do in this tiny space. All right, so we're going to go side, behind, side, in front, side, behind, side, in front. Each time changing the weight immediately. So play around with any kind of patterns that you want. All right, now we've done heel drops before, picking up and lowering the heel. Now let's combine that with the step. So now we're going to go step, heel, step, Heel. Again, making sure that you're not going step and then transferring the weight. Transfer, transfer, transfer. Ball and heel. Okay, so now let's do um, some ball heels with the music. Step heel or ball heel, either term is correct. Here we go. Ready? And we go. All right. Now what if we try to What if we What if we try to do that a little bit quicker? So let's try, um, let's try to speed that up just a little bit. If you can't speed it up, it's okay. Keep working at it on a slow uh, pace, but do always try to push yourself. And if you get to the part where you can't do it, then you'll know that's the place that you have to try to push further. And a lot of that speed comes with muscle development in the feet and ankles. So you want to be sure that you don't get frustrated just because you can't go fast all of a sudden. It's like piano playing. You have to have the skills in that part of your body that you're using the most often. All right, so, excuse me. All right, we're gonna put that up. And we 
go. Step, heel, step, heel. another challenge for yourself if you're just starting out in tap learn what the movement is get secure in that movement and then push it to go a little faster I'm also encouraging you to use the kind of music right now that inspires you this music I chose because it's all the Broadway uh, musicals in one little place that I can use but popular music rap anything you want can be used for tap as long as you can identify the beat. All right, so now we've done our step and we've done a step heel or toe heel or ball heel. Step heel is a good term too because it tells you to transfer that weight. All right, so now let's play around with um, adding one more piece to that step heel. Remember when we learned the heel dig? We've done that in a couple of instances. Now let's put that together with the step heel. So we go step, heel, dig the opposite heel. Step, heel, dig. Step, heel, dig. Step, heel, dig. Step, heel, dig. Now you're transferring the weight immediately in the step heel so the other foot is ready to go into that dig. And these three movements are going to lead us into another movement that you will enjoy that tap dancers use all the time, but we'll save that for the next lesson. Let's just, ready we go, step, heel, dig, 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 step, heel, Good. Now let's see if we can speed that up. Speeding up the music to a little quicker pace. Step, heel, dig. Step, heel, dig. It's not really fast, but it does help you figure out whether or not you're transferring that weight. to combine some things. The next thing that I want to work on today is a movement that's used all of the time in tap dance and that movement is called a flap. F-L-A-P. And the flap it takes the brush that we've learned throwing the foot forward, brush, and the step. Alright, so we want to be sure that we brush, transfer the weight. Okay, brush step. First step, 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 first step. So making sure that we're transferring the weight immediately following the brush because the brush is in the air, the step hits the ground and takes the weight so it frees up the opposite foot. So let's go now and see if we can do the flaps with some music. All right, here we go. Ready, and a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, a seven, a eight, a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, a seven, a eight. Good. All right, now again, 
these are steps that we start off doing slowly and then we're going to speed it up. and stepping. So let's take that flap and let's add something to it that we already know. So we know how to do a shuffle, which was your brush lift, brush lift, brush lift. All right, let's try that on both feet. Brush lift, brush lift that knee, brush lift. Make sure your foot's nice and relaxed. And now we're going to add that. We're going to take a flap that we just learned, flap, and then the left foot is ready to do the shuffle. And now our left foot is free. We can do the flap and the shuffle. All right, I'm trying to turn so you can see different things. So it becomes flap, shuffle, flap, shuffle, flap, shuffle, flap, shuffle. Let's see if we can do that a few times with some music. And um, then we'll speed it up as well. Ready? And we go. Collapse the pull, 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 collapse the pull. Okay. How'd you do? <laughs> all right. So all of these things can be sped up. Let me see if I can. Step, collapse, step, step, collapse, step, collapse, step, step, collapse, step, step, collapse, step, collapse, step. So we can add that to the little combination. We can also do step, toe, heel, step, step, toe, heel, step, toe, heel, step, step, toe, heel, step, step, toe, heel, step, toe, heel, step. Notice that that's one I talked about earlier that is not going to change the whole eight counts is not going to shift from one foot to the other. So you have to do that for yourself. Step, toe, heel, step, step, toe, heel, step, toe, heel, step. And then it will just go back to the left foot leading. So practice inserting. To finish up today's session, let's take a few of the movements that you already know. <clears throat> Those movements would be stomp. Remember the whole foot against the floor and then rebounds. And then we can... Follow that with a spank, which is a back brush lifting the knee. Stomp, spank. Uh, the next one would be a step, which is going to change weight. <laughs> and you're going to um, repeat that. I'll give you the pattern in a minute. And the other movement that you're going to learn know is your ball change. Ball change. Okay? Those movements are all that's going to, we're going to need today to put together in what is called a time step. A time step is an eight bar structure called a phrase and it began as a means of setting the tempo and style for the musicians that were accompanying the tap dancer. <clears throat> it is an eight bar phrase consisting of a two bar pattern repeated three times and ending with a two bar break. There are hundreds of time steps but one of the most famous is called the shim sham shimmy or the Shim Sham for short. This particular one was created by Leonard Reed around 1927. All right, so let me give you the movements of the Shim Sham. We start with a stomp, spank, step, and then we repeat it on the other foot. Stomp, spank, step. The next time, we're gonna throw in a ball change. Stomp, spank, ball, change and repeat, stomp, spank, step. Now we've got the right foot on the floor, weight on it, so we're gonna repeat the entire uh, two bars on the left foot. Stomp, spank, step, stomp, spank, step, stomp, spank, ball, change, stomp, spank, step. Now we're gonna do it a third time. Stomp, spank, step, stomp, spank, step, Stomp, spank, ball, change, stomp, spank, step. Now 
let's put that together. We're going to use 4-4 um, four, four time in this case. So we're going to count it out. And the time step usually begins on the last count of the measure right before the time step is inserted. So it's going to start on count 8. A then 1, 2 and 3, 4 and 5 and 6 and 7. 8 and 1, 2 and 3, 4 and 5 and 6 and 7. 8 and 1, 2 and 3, 4 and 5 and 6 and 7. That was a two bar uh, pattern. We repeated it three times. Following that, there's a break. So it usually the last two bars ends the um, eight bar phrase. But we'll learn that next time. But for now, you have all the tools to do your very first time step. All right, you're gonna practice it and you're gonna push your speed a little bit so that you can do it a little bit faster. But if you can't do it with the music, don't let that throw you. Just do it however slow you need to do it and that'll be fine. Let's start with some pretty slow music here. Five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven. Eight, and one, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven. Third time. Four, and five, and six, and seven. And a break. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we start again. Okay? All right, you just repeat that until you're comfortable and don't let it throw you because it's a lot of movement together you know how to do all these movements and there's not that many just put it in your head that you know to do a spank I mean a stomp a spank and a step the only difference on the third time is that you're throwing in a ball change <coughs> excuse me <coughs> the nice part about this class is that you're on your own no one to make it self-conscious. You can learn things at your own pace. I just want to say here that tap dancing involves more than just the feet. It also involves the ears. And you need to listen to hear what you are doing and understand how you are making the music. Also, a lot of people think tap dancing has to be super, super fast. Well, dances like visual art or music, there has to be some space in and around the movement. If you're only trying to do it as fast as you can, it can sound like a box of rocks to the listener. Know your steps and speed them up with you in control of the movement. <clears throat> the Shim Sham Shimmy is also known as the national anthem of tap dance. If you go to any gathering of tap dancers, you're likely to <coughs> be called up with everyone together to do the Shim Sham. There's many variations of the Shim Sham, but they all fit together in the same structure. So let's try speeding up our shim sham for those of you that have a handle on it already. <laughs> and we'll do five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven, eight, and one, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven, eight, and one, two, and three, and six and seven and then we would throw in a break do it again eight and one two and three four and five and six and seven eight and one two and three four and five and six and seven eight and one two and three four and five and six and seven and the break all right well that's it for video number four i hope you're starting to feel like you're tap dancing now that you've got a combination or two under your belts to work on and I hope those of you that have more uh, skill are pushing your skill by increasing the speed and moving the things around that I've taught you into different uh, combinations for yourself so you're stretching as well so I look forward to seeing you for the next time thanks <music>